Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. This week I get to tackle the sky. So I've selected some glass over here. I have this beautiful soft color, which is slightly tealish, but still on the blue side. And then I have this iridized glass that I'm going to mix in. I don't know where I got that or what it is, but this one is from Armstrong. There's the number and the name. So I will be using squares and uh, yeah, let me get after it. on this commission of this dog named Millie and I have my image right here that I can refer to but I also have it on my iPad right here and what's nice about this is of course I can zoom in if I need to so I'm gonna start with the eyes and when I look at the eyes I'm gonna make a design decision right away that I'm gonna go ahead and make the pupil on both of them equal and then I'm going to make a similar reflection in the eyes instead of making it so uneven I did ask about, and I mentioned how this eye rolls a little bit that way, and uh, the owner said that uh, that's how the dog's eye was, and so that's fine, we're gonna keep it like that. But the reflection and the pupil will be what I start with. So with the reference photo right there, I have selected some scrap pieces for my palette, and I'm going to get started now.
this eye a little more closely. I'm, I'm looking to match the white of the eye there. And I have some white glass and you can see that it is just way, way too white. And this is sort of the cream color that I used for the highlight. And it is not the right color. It's more pinkish purple than that. And I have this piece that I think is really close. I'm gonna use the lighter portion right there. It's a piece of amber purple. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. I was able to work on this a little bit off camera and I did go back and round out this eye a little bit. It was a little bit flat on that side and finished the nose. So next week I'll start to tackle the head a little bit more, maybe even getting the ears done. And then the last week I'll do the body and then the background. We'll see if I have to break it into that many weeks or if I can wrap it up quicker than that. She's really got such a sweet little face and kind of a smile there. So it's been a joy to work on this one. I just started teaching a new class and everyone in the class is doing a geometric pattern on a 10 inch by 10 inch piece of birch plywood. And so I started this this week and wanted to get a little bit of a jump on it so that I could use it as a demonstration project for the class. And uh, we just have three weeks left. So I wanna see hopefully if everyone can finish. This is how far I got. I basically just picked some colors that I like and some mirror and I'm going to be laying them all in. I think I'll probably do a neutral background, but that's one of the great things about a geometric pattern like this. I can use whatever colors I want. And now back to the sunflower. I really want to get this background knocked out. laid in at least one line of glass around the main subject matter, this sunflower. And now when it comes to laying in the rest of the glass, I'm going to continue these lines that have already started. And so they are going to go in all directions. They're gonna go up, they're gonna come down, just following the lines that are already started, going off, coming down, going up. And I will be adding more iridized glass at this point.
this is getting dangerous and it's time for me to clean up. So I'm going to pick up some of these bigger pieces and sweep up the rest so I don't cut myself. There, so much more pleasant to work when I don't have shards absolutely everywhere. So now I'm gonna get after it again. something like this background, which is seemingly random. And it actually is not that random. I've created some rules for myself, and as long as I follow the rules, it looks just like I want it to look. But one of the rules is that the iridized glass does not go next to the main subject. It just would pull too much away. I think I just have one here, but otherwise it's not touching the subject but it's sprinkled throughout the rest of the background, but I never have it touching another piece of iridized glass. I don't want it to be a blob. I want it to be throughout, sprinkled throughout. And then this glass is what I'm using for the bulk of the background, and it has light parts and dark parts. And so it, it's okay if these two are next to each other because I want that to be what most of the background is. And then I also have this light blue, which is sprinkled throughout, and occasionally it touches. It's not such a big deal if this one touches, but uh, touches itself in the pattern. Anyway, um, the other thing is that I, I do like to individually cut the pieces and place them from the strips uh, because the they are keystone somewhat, and the keystone varies. If I had a pile of squares, I would probably have to nip them down to fit, and it just seems faster if I'm gonna cut them custom to start with a basic uh, rod and sort of fit the yeah. piece. I just already know what I'm gonna do before I start and then I just follow the plan throughout for the best result. little trip to ATL Glassworks in Atlanta, Georgia to visit Day Kennedy and attend a Glass Guild meeting. And Day is going to show us a little demo. I'm here at Daylight Glassworks and Day Kennedy is going to give a demonstration of how a curve, an inside curve out of stained glass, which is one of the hardest to cut. And she's using a scoring tool and grossing pliers. So I changed my pattern piece here. I'm going to cut this one first. Okay. And then I'm going to get the bulk of the glass that I don't want out. Nice. And then I'm going to start and go in on one side. And then I'm going to go in on the other side. Now, do you always push away from me when you're scoring? I do. I feel like I have more control that way, mm -hmm. and I'm also not See covering better. up the guide that I'm um, using. Oh, how great is that? So that would be used, for instance, in a stained glass piece, like the piece on the bottom here, right? Yes. Where you got that. All right. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, bye.
problem areas. One is this piece that is not the full width and another one is up here where I have a notch sticking out. So for the notch, I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece at an angle and then curve this one around and just continue the row that way. And for this one, I will have a piece that comes out here like that for that one. And then I think I'm gonna split the difference and have one that comes over. I, I'm staggering the joints so it's gonna come out to this like so, and then that one will come over like that. And then I'll have a triangle-ish piece right there. That's it. Whenever I have problem areas, I either figure it out in my head, if it gets too tricky, I'll draw it out for myself. It's hard to capture that iridized glass in there, but I do it quite a bit. That's putting it together. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.